Hello and welcome to another edition of Sadler's TV. I'm joined this week by the three wise men, Mr John Whitney, Mr Neil Cutler and uh, John Ward to my left hand side. We've got a lot to get through um, in what's been a turbulent week. These guys aim to steady the ship. Um, if I can come to you, John Whitney, first, can you try and summarise the last 10 days for us here at the club? Slight, slightly um, chaotic at first, mm -hmm. but that didn't last long. Um, and we, we've spoken quite a lot post-match and pre-match, uh, especially the Shrewsbury game, how we try and get the players to self-manage. And we, we've even had that experience that today at training. Uh, we, we've just um, stayed in, in the room having a meeting and the players have just more or less managed everything themselves. Mm. It's, it's a fantastic, fantastic place to work, fantastic group of lads. And uh, we've more or less just kept, kept, the, kept, the, kept it simmering. Uh, we tweaked a few little things. Um, got the feedback from them which has been very positive and we've just kept the ball rolling really for for uh, the two games and it's been we haven't had a chance to step back and think about it it's yeah. happened just too quick yeah. but we're, we're very experienced between us and we've been in similar situations before so what you do you just call upon that reflect back mm -hmm. take little bits from that and then this is where we are today we've still two games unbeaten because <laughs> how do you think the players have responded to Dean and Dean and Richard's departure uh, really well I mean obviously we had we've had quite a few meetings after the, the Dean and uh, Richard have gone and it's enabled them to pull together to be stronger to gain more of a, um, a collectiveness and mm. um, a strength from within they've got closer you can see they're becoming more of a unit um, and it'll, it'll make them stronger going forward because they've had to now pull together mm. um, and you can see by the performances where we've had to dig in like Shrewsbury last few minutes of the game where we're back against the wall and we're throwing our bodies in the line and and then exactly the same at the weekend where they're throwing balls in a box, the weather's, see the wind and the conditions and they've had to roll the sleeves. I know we've conceded late, mm -hmm. but we've still defended really well in terms of throwing our body in the line, heading things, coming through bodies, others come for punches and they've got more, they're getting closer as it goes on. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Rich and, and Dean um, have set a philosophy where, as John's just said, they problem solve for themselves, but I think that now they've had to become stronger in terms of a group mentality. Actually, we need to pull together now mm. to get through this. Mm. John, you which is, uh, and Kurtz have already mentioned the last two results, but that Shrewsbury game in particular, many people would have been having a little look at that, having one eye on it and expecting the wheels to fall off the first game after the, the departure of the manager and his assistant. How big a result was that to come from behind as well and, and the players show the character they did? Yeah, it was, a, it was good that you couldn't have written it better in terms of how it went around it. But I think that was a good thing for us two particularly, us three particularly and, and the, the, the players because it, it was a game to focus on immediately. The, mm. the Monday morning, as I say, when Dean and Richard came in and said the goodbyes, there was a, well, what's happening next, how do we do this? We got straight back out on the training ground and prepared for a game. And it wasn't as if we had to wait till a week and, uh, and sort of Thursday and Friday, people are still wondering how the team's going to be. They went straight out there, put the gear on, couldn't have gone better, goal down just before half time, a goal back, then you go on and, and, and win the game with a big following from the club and, and everybody kind of pulled together on that that one evening at that one particular time. So that was literally, for me, that was, OK, you know, the king is dead, long live the king type mm -hmm. of thing because we've got to move on to the next little bit and, and that's exactly what the players and these two guys have done and we've all tried to, to work our pieces together and said this is what we need to do next to, to, to maintain it. If you said anything to the players, of course they want to keep winning, of course they want to keep trying to get in the top three too and get promotion and that, that's the thing that everyone's trying to, to achieve. So I think the point was just made by the lads that they're very, very self-effacing the boys they look after themselves very well but within the right ethics of the team and the club and that that's something that I found really really interesting and, 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 and extremely good that, that that group of players are looking to do that themselves and you know we've had a part to play of course we have but it's down to players what do they want they want the same thing now as they did two weeks ago when Dean and Rich were here mm. so let's go and try and do it <laughs> well, you spoke about that self-governance in games that in-game management I remember you'd impressed duty straight after the game and spoke about the fact that the players almost didn't need a manager in the dugout they know what to do they're that well drilled first of all how do you get the players to do that and how do you achieve it is it something that you do on the training ground is it uh, having the core number of players stay together yeah, it, it goes by the, the philosophy right through the club and the, the core principles the core values that we have and if you're going to get something like that it has to start at a, um, a conscious level 
practice it daily and make it habitual then it, then it becomes a subconscious move rather than knowing it. it's the mm. same with training it's the same with any kind of any kind of training concept you have to do it enough times to make it become a habit so then it happens instinctively on the pitch but what you have to do in training you have to set the players up for failure so we have to put sessions on where we know it's going to test them they're not aware of it, but you're not really going to win this one because mm -hmm. it's 6v2. And so we're trying to teach them that sometimes in games, not everything goes to plan. So if we can be better than the other teams at reacting to that, um, adapting and then applying our basics, our fundamental basics and not getting too carried away, not getting too down in, in game situations, you're much more likely then to keep with your game plan. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been doing. We're trying to teach them this and it doesn't always go to plan. You, you, we want you to be individually expressive and mm -hmm. go and showcase your talents, but do it within this team ethos. If when it doesn't go right, you get you get back into shape. We get ourselves set to press. We make ourselves hard to get beat. And we do the same stuff. We've done the same today. Everything we've done today, we've been talking about Fleetwood. Yeah. We've been saying, this is what they're going to do. This is probably what they're going to play. So a little bit how we changed it, but we started from now. It starts from now. Mm. We, we put it to bed with the debrief, Chesterfield. It's all about Fleetwood. That's our next battle. Mm. That's where we need our next point. So everything we do from now will be geared towards that. You've spoke about how well the players have adapted. Kutz is a goalkeeper coach and Witz is the guy who treats all the players. How have you adapted to taking on almost an additional workload? Because you've already got your own jobs to get on with, with the goalkeepers, yeah. with the injured players. Well, and now you've got this, the much manager. Easy, much easier with the well, keepers. <laughs> <laughs> as far as, as Witz is concerned, Witz is not just a physio. Yeah. Witz is the base around everything we do. Mm -hmm. he's, he's the one that's actually pushed, pushed the philosophy forward. Mm -hmm. I know it kind of gets pigeonholed a little bit. He's yeah, the physio, yeah. he's the one that treats them, but he's the one that's actually driven the philosophy. Everything in terms of the fast stuff, staying in his shape, staying together, moving your feet. Our, the way we are as athletes, the way we go about our work daily is driven mm -hmm. by Witz. Yeah. And I think it's he needs to take a lot of credit for the fact that he's not just a physio. Yeah. He's everything as well as that. And he's the one that we're lucky to still have because he's the one that drives us forward. And, mm. and everything we do, like I say, the philosophy is based on... Quite tough. Oh. <laughs> Emotionally. <laughs> it's true. And it's like, um, I think we, we have to realise that obviously we're very lucky to have him still in place to keep that shit moving forward, to keep us pushing forward and to keep the same philosophy. Um, in terms of the goalkeeping, what I'm doing, I'm having to step forward out of my comfort zone a little bit, take outfield sessions, mm -hmm. and it's a massive learning curve for me, but the lads have really bought into it. I've taken a session today, and again, it's out of my comfort zone, but I enjoyed it, they bought into it, and they're a great bunch, and they will. Mm -hmm. um, and it's good for me because I don't want to be pigeonholed as just a goalkeeping coach. Yeah. You're not just a goalkeeping coach. Yeah. You're a, you're a first-team coach. You mm -hmm. have an input. I feel I've had an input. With, with John and with Wits on how we're moving mm. forward so far and the planning, the preparation. Me and Wits are going to watch Fleetwood play tonight. Mm -hmm. So we're going to plan tactically about how we're going to combat that. We'll come back and we'll talk to John about that. Yeah. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a big learning curve for me. Um, but I love it. I really enjoy it. The tactical side we were saying before, mm. we actually mm. watching the games and how we prepare is like, which has had about three hours sleep in the last, <laughs> in the last week. Which is double what I'm used to. So it's, it's about this. <laughs> but it is because we're enjoying it, because we're stepping forward. Yeah. We're rolling our sleeves. It's a challenge. Going, Hang on a yeah, sec. Yeah. We're it's not going to sit back and go, well, whatever will be, will be. We're actually rolling our yeah. sleeves and going, right, we're going to make this, we're going to have a good go at this, yeah. and we're going to do the best we possibly can. And John, you, you were brought in a few months ago. You've primarily been tasked with looking after the young professionals amongst us. But just a question on the senior players. How crucial are they at a time like this where you need leaders out there on the training pitch and, and on the on the match day as well? Yeah, they're, they're very, very important all the time, <clears throat> let alone a situation that's just happened here. Because they, I think the, one of the first things that happened that some of the senior boys grabbed the group together and talked about what, what do we do now? You mm -hmm. know, How do we work? This was two ways you can go. You can either blame everything on the fact that the manager's left so it doesn't continue or you, you, you dig in and you work away because the team is successful. It's unusual sometimes that the manager goes because he's good. Mm. Um, it's often because the results have not been so good. So they then look forward to a different type of leadership. But we also we also met and discussed it. I said, right, we don't need to change anything, but we just need to reinforce it. And, that, and I think that's what the players have actually done themselves. The guys here talking about them self-managing, and that's exactly what they do. You know, their dressing room is very strong. They also need some some leadership and, and some some organisation from ourselves. But and, and we try and give them that, but in the same positive frame of mind that they're discussing things. So I I found it really interesting coming into into the club, and I, I've had to 
probably sit quietly and ease my way into the, the way the football club works because I, I can't jump into this. There's, there's nothing to change, there's nothing to alter, there's nothing to, to, to mess about with in a sense. So just just sit and take it, just see how it works and see how I fit in. I hope I have because I've really enjoyed it. You know, I don't not claim to have any, any sort of alterations to the football club because mm -hmm. it didn't need it but you just think come on I, I really enjoyed it as, as well as these guys have worked and the way the players are mm -hmm. and I'm thinking I just want to fit in here because it's a really good working environment plus it's successful and why do you change that if you don't have to and I don't think we have to at the moment mm -hmm. We're going to look forward to the Fleetwood game this weekend and answer some some fantastic fan questions that you've sent in to us on Twitter as well at WFC official the Twitter handle and you can join in the debate using the hashtag Saddlers TV don't go anywhere Hello and welcome back to Sadler's TV. John Whitney, Neil Cutler and John Moore join me for tonight's show. Uh, we've got some supporters questions in, some interesting ones as well. Uh, John Ward, I'm going to start with you. Dan Gilbert asks, now brace yourself for this one. Oh, go on. If you're involved in a bar brawl, oh, which yeah. one of these two <laughs> do you want on your team and why? That's an easy answer. <laughs> <laughs> well... You wouldn't choose a goalkeeper in a fight, so I'd have to, I'd have to go with Wits. Oh, fantastic. I'd have to go with Wits because, That's all I want. because he has, he's got a strong frame of mind, he's got strong opinions, and if his opinion was to look after me, I'd back him. All right. I've, I've seen goalkeepers yeah. not come for crosses, yeah. and I think... Yeah, I think in this indecision I think, in there. I think goalkeeper is. I think, yeah. Well, it's just a general thing. Yeah, but that's why you're a I'm goalkeeper. So I, think, I think Wits would come for crosses, and I'd, I'd back him. To, yeah, to help fantastic. me out. Okay. Um, which, Sorry, mate. <laughs> you're big lad, aren't you? But your hair's nice, isn't it? It's, it looks nice, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? He's, he's not... bald, he gets he's the ball. Like, no, he's, he's, a... he's saying I look like a thong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. saying around the bar. Yeah, he's like, I am. I yeah, think you've had an experience yeah. of a couple of barroom brawls and he oh, probably yeah, hasn't. I don't know those things. No, no, no. I can't. That's wrong. I apologise. Ben Rogers asks, Wits, I'll come to you for this one. Do you believe we can still push for promotion even with the departure of Dean and Richard? Simple, yes. Promotion. Yes, I do. Uh, promotion, I've been involved as a player and as staff in a, a few promotions and the biggest thing is consistency. It's one, you have to be good enough to do it. You have to be organised and disciplined. You have to have individuals who are game changers. Mm -hmm. But biggest and foremost, you have to have a team morale and a togetherness, which we really push for years. It's much harder to get that now, the way it is with a modern game. A lot of managers I worked with did it on fear tactics. Um, but now it, it's about respect now, getting the players respect and knowing that you're organised. If the players can see that you're organised and you're driven mm. and you're also supporting them and giving them self-belief, that, that's their great ingredients to help you towards a promotion plus. And we're averaging almost two, two points, points a game, game and that keeps us in the top three. Mm -hmm. We've got to keep doing the same things, same thing we do. Work even harder. If there's those little percentages which I keep talking about that we can help with and we can tweak with myself, Neil and John, that's what we're doing. We're doing everything we can to prepare them for the next game, mm -hmm. day in, day out. And the players have, so far, it's, it's working for us. So in short, it's a yes? It is. Uh, Jack Ryan asks, to you, Cuts, uh, how well are the goalkeepers coming on? Really well, really well. Um, obviously, which I don't know, did well over the last two years, mm -hmm. and we brought Neil Etheridge in, um, who I've been watching for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. um, He's a big lad, and his development over the last, well, since the start of the season, has been first class. Mm. He's done really, really well. I always knew he had a lot to offer, but it was just how long it would take me to get it out of him. Mm. He's he's a, he's big, commanding, bold, brave. He'll come for things not many others will come for. He's mm. front foot, he's quick. Mm -hmm. and he's still got so much more to come. He's not played many games in his career. He's played more international games than he has actually yeah, league okay, games. So yeah. um, it's a matter of now gaining the consistency with him to make sure that he's making consistent, positive, correct decisions within that because he is front foot and he is quick so he'll come for things where you think, whoa, hang on a sec, but he'll get there because he's quick. Um, but little technical details that still need improving, ta little tactical details, but he's psychologically really strong. He drops one, he'll come for the next one. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about that with him. Um, and I think he's one of the big reasons why we've done well this year because mm -hmm. he is that commanding, he is that much of a presence. Yeah. Um, and he can start to become more of a leader in the group. When he plays more games, he'll have more of a voice and that will help as well. Um, and then underneath him, obviously, you've got Craig that's come in and done well as well. It's obviously mm -hmm. difficult for him because 
he, he sees himself. He wants to be the first choice. He mm. wants to play. He doesn't want to be sitting there as number two. He wants to play. So it's just which is what you want. From of course players. it is, and he's pushing. Others is pushing Neil every single day, and he's a good lad, and he works hard, and every time he steps in, he does okay. He does mm. well. Um, so it's kind of it's difficult as a goalkeeping coach because I want them both to play. Yeah. <laughs> I want yeah. others to stay in the team. I don't want him to play bad, <laughs> and I want. Craig to come in and stay in the team. I don't want him to play bad, and yeah. it's it's kind of like it's just wanting the best out of both and pushing them both as much as I possibly can. Um, then you got Liam Roberts underneath that, who's done really really well, been on loan, um, and he's just gaining that consistency now. Mm. He's 21 now, and he's he's been out on loan and played games, so and he's coming through nicely. So um, they're all coming through all right. Mm-hmm. Dan Jezef and the youth team's doing okay. So mm. as far as the goalkeepers and Kern's concerned, I think I think they're all right. Yeah, I think they're okay. okay. Good. Um, Nathan Thacker asks John Ward, did you know that you're only the same age as Claudio Ranieri, therefore not too old for management? I didn't know that until you just told me. <laughs> uh, it kind of doesn't affect my view on, <laughs> on that, though, my own personal yeah. decision, but yeah. uh, he's, uh, he's a lucky man, by the way. He's, just, he's, gone, into a, he's gone into a ready-made football club yeah. and uh, he's has tweaked it slightly a bit, but he's had enough sense, I think, and that probably comes with getting a bit older you get a bit more common sense maybe I made a decision not to do a lot and keep it going so mm-hmm. fair play to him uh, but it's not something I'm looking to try and do oh, I think that's fair enough um, I've got to touch upon the FA Cup draw I don't think you guys could believe it like many of us could have when <laughs> destined when, to happen when, I know, yeah, when the ball was left in number like, 60 comes out away yeah. at Brentford I mean Chesterfield still to, to, to come back down here at the Banks but what an incentive to go and, and have potentially a, a reunion with yeah. Dean Smith and I, I said to I said to my two little ones because uh, Bo my little girl and Ollie uh and team apart and then we both said, who would you love I said well I'd love Liverpool because I never got a chance to play against them in my dream team or I'd love Wickham or Brentford because they're two of me two of my best friends mm-hmm. and I'd love just to pick my wits against them yeah um and I, I tell you, it would make me proud to stand on the touchline alongside your friend yeah. you know, in, in an FA Cup yeah. tie. That would be fantastic. But, <laughs> and, and one of them came through. So I was, jump, I was actually jumping up and down when it came through. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just fantastic because yeah. it, it's great for everybody. Because you, for some of the players who have been developed by Dean, um, they're going to pit. They're going to pit the wits against the master. Yeah. So it's like you Student want to actually show. Master, look, yeah. look, we'll show you how good we are. Yeah. So it's like it's that kind of. And, and you're right. The old cliche is going to come. Yeah. We've got to do chessing, but we're yeah. professional enough to do that. To also, it gives us a great incentive mm. to want to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the key is that it is an incentive. Yeah, it's a great. So it incentive should be driving them. It shouldn't be the fact of we're going to go and play Brentford. The fact is we've got a big game. Yeah. We've got a really big mm. game to plan for, and it's going to be. It is going to be a tough game. Mm-hmm. So the incentives there. You've got to do well against Chesterfield now. You've got to get past them first and foremost. Talking of big games, back to league matters this weekend. Fleetwood away. I mean, there's no easy games in this division, Wardy, but looking to put another three points on the board and be hot on the, the heels of the leaders? Yeah, we are. <clears throat> Obviously, we are. That's the way we'll talk to the team. And John's already said we've set that up this morning and the, 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 the seeds are being sown already. But I think also the guys are going to watch them play tonight mm-hmm. as, as we're chatting um, and they'll come back with some more information. So there's no sort of complacency whatsoever yeah. in terms of us or them or the preparation the players will be picking all that up towards the end of the week uh, and we'll plan and prepare ourselves as best we can as, as they've done all the time it's a tough game every game's a tough one it's, a, you know, it's an old thing to say for mm. football managers but at the same time we recognise that if we can play well we give ourselves a good chance of winning and we'll have as much information as we possibly can on our opponents to to give us that extra little bit if we need it mm. just looking at last year which obviously 20 games in now two points off the top what's been the main difference because certainly our away record six wins three draws one defeat only Oxford can match that in the whole of England, what do you think has been the main difference from last year to this season? I know injuries were a big part of the start of last season. Yeah, I think when you look back over Dean's um, tenureship, we, we drew a lot of games. We were close to winning a hell of a lot of games, mm. but we just for some reason we didn't see it through. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think quality of play has improved this year. I think Jason Dimitri has been a, been a huge influence. I think mm. Neil Everidge has been a huge influence. Um, Jimmy O'Connor has been consistent. Paul Down has grown in stature mm. again. Rico Rico Henry's just steamrolled his way in. Andy Taylor has been consistent and he's fighting for that place we've yeah. got midfield boys George Evans has come in so suddenly we've got these players and Tom's carried on and playing more consecutive games all the young boys have started to grow in stature in confidence all that leads to the fact that you're going to get much more competition for places which accumulates in the fact you're going to get better performances mm-hmm. if you get more consistent performances you're going to pick up more points it's not rocket science yeah. you've got to just get more consistency yeah. and we're consistent in what we do we're, we're turning 
we're turning um, performances into whereas last year sometimes it was a 45 minute performance and then it took Dean and Richard to have a word to then probably correct a few mistakes mm -hmm. we're tending to we're tending to now to extend that into 60 70 80 minutes and then hanging on a bit and getting ourselves up or where we're dangerous we're coming back from behind as well so we're actually we can cover both sides yeah. because we stick to the basics and we keep doing what we do mm -hmm. more times than not up to now it's 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 put us out on the on the winning side yeah and i think last season a lot of the the goal scoring responsibility was on tom bradshaw that's almost been taken off him to an extent this year because we have goals in all areas of the pitch yeah, that's the key and that's the key to winning getting promotions mm -hmm. is getting goals from from other positions um if you struggle to get obviously if you struggle to get goals from positions you'll struggle to win games and then you'll get promoted so mm -hmm. that's we know that we know that we're addressing it and it's worked so far this season mm -hmm. um, John just one for you really quickly Jordan Murphy recalled from his loan spell at Kidderminster you've worked quite closely with Jordan what qualities does he, does he offer? Well one is a good player and he's mm -hmm. going to get a better, become a better player and I think going out to Kidderminster's way of that de of developing I, I watch quite a lot of under 21 football and it's, it's nice football I think when you go to Kidderminster and play like League Five, if you like, mm -hmm. in terms of the, the level of it, it's it's a matter of winning. You've got to do it properly. And I, and I saw him in one of the games. I went to see him, and he played very well. And I thought like, this kid's developing quite nicely. And we we brought him back because we had the injuries to Tom. We know we can rely on certainly his effort and yeah. his improvement in terms of quality is is getting better all the time. So Fantastic. we're looking to sort of promote those boys and say, come on, you can hmm. do this. And Good. going out to Kidderminster is brilliant. Good. That's all we've got time for here on Sadler's TV. Thanks ever so much to two Johns uh, and Neil. Um, unfortunately, we've run out of time. Of course, join the debate using uh, the Twitter handle at WFC Official and the hashtag Sadler's TV. Bye for now.